Hi everyone, it's been three months now since Floppy barreled his way into our lives, having spent a year in kennels trying to find his forever home. We've had an eventful time and I thought we should update you on how we're getting on now after three months. Homed greyhounds often have issues with diet and digestion and Floppy here has been no different in that respect. I have often find you need to feed them more at the start because of all the extra calories they are using up and Floppy has been on 50% more food over the last few months. He is eating well and he can still be easily distracted from his bowl if something happens outside. Sometimes he will only settle to eat without disruption if I stand next to him until he's finished. I'm still working on settling his digestion down. We tried stopping the probiotics after two months but it soon became clear that we needed to start again so we're back on those for another couple of months. We are doing something right though because his coat is improving with a combination of regular brushing and support for his skin he is looking much shinier and much blacker than he was when he came. And what about the toilet training? Well, the onslaught of Floppy's laundry has finally eased off. We're still getting a few accidents, but it's reduced to maybe once a week instead of multiple times a day, which is a great relief. And they're also in slightly different places, so I'm constantly snooping over to check to see if there's any suspicious puddles when I've not been in a room recently. When it comes to learning the house rules, Floppy is surprisingly compliant these days given the issues that he came with. He's quickly got the hang of our routine and picked up the subconscious cues that tell him what's happening next. So he knows the system for meals and waits patiently till it's his turn. I can tell that he's more relaxed because he's even started chattering his teeth, although it doesn't work very well with his teeth and it ends up being more of a cute wobble of his nose due to his funny face. He still loves being in his crate and sometimes if I put his YouTube music on he will head there and lie down because it's a good chance that I'm going to be going out so it's an indicator to him that he needs to go and be quiet now. When it comes to his reactivity this is the area that he really struggled with when he arrived even the sound of a dog barking was a problem. He's becoming more tolerant of this and I think it's as he gets used to certain dogs locally we can pass certain gardens with dogs barking and that is okay. If he's in my garden and a dog barks he's okay if I'm there but if I were to say go round the front to my rubbish bin that will be another matter and if my neighbour comes out suddenly slamming the door then he loses the plot. So this is going to take some time to fix as I can't control his exposure to that trigger. He does like to be in the shed normally, although he is conspicuous by his absent right now and I've got Gandalf instead. He seems to find reassurance in smaller spaces. So he likes the car, he likes his crate and now he likes the shed. Those smaller spaces make him feel more secure, I think. Out on walks he can be mostly fairly calm with dogs barking but if it's in a house that we're passing that's okay. If it's a dog on the road that he can see then that's another matter. But he's much more connected to me and we can quickly change direction if I spot trouble up ahead or he will still respond to me if we see another dog. So body contact also helps if he's feeling anxious so we might stop for some treats and a bit of tea touch until he feels able to carry on without too much barking. We're spending much more time watching the world go by and we're doing that in places where I can spot the problem at a fair distance and move him on before anything gets too close. So there is still a long way to go. And I'm not sure he's ever going to be the sort of dog that you're going to take to a cafe and sit while you have coffee. But hey, who knows? He's got time. So what next? Where does this leave us? According to the charity that he's with, a short-term foster is reviewed after three months. 
and the committee will decide what to do next, which could involve returning him to the kennels. So this is obviously outside my control. We just have to wait and see what they decide to do. But whatever happens, we'll be back again with another update for you before too long. So bye for now. Ew, he's weeding that, the rotten becker. You can tell SpongeBob here, I go for a walk first, seeing his eyes the senior dog. I'm really sorry I weed in your crocs. Again. And on Jimmy, and on Gandalf, and most for the sofa. <clears throat> hello, 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 what's all this shouting? We'll have no trouble here, I'll. Huh? And let's go woof, and let's go woof, and let's go woof, and let's go woof. Only I'm the one that's allowed to go woof. <laughs> <laughs> I have no sympathy. No sympathy at all. What am I gonna get down? I've only just got up here. Hey, up, Chuck. Boop, you way up, Chuck, the viewers. He's eaten into my grooming time. I'll do. Don't mind me. Carry on. You think your head was in that? Or was your head missing? You think we did all of that without your head? Do you? You think we did? Look out for new videos every Monday and why not subscribe so you don't miss out.